Almita Inventory Distributor, AID. How to manage inventory items. Let's click the Activities menu tab, then Item Master menu choice. The Inventory Items screen will open. To create a new item, click the yellow plus button. Input new item ID in the prompt. The item ID could be a supplier part, UPC code, or our own part number. Click the OK button. A new record has been created for us. Now we will populate all necessary fields. We will input item name or description, cost, and price. The cost is an average buying price, and the price is our list price. The stocking units is the smallest unit of measure that we ever buy or sell the product in. The package is basically a container. Sample package is a box, carton, bundle, or reel. Let's input package weight, dimensions, volume, number of units in the package. Let us select a default location in the storage room or a bin number. If we are collecting taxes on sales, the item will be taxable. If our item is inventoried, it should be marked as inventory item. Sample non-inventory items are shipping charges, miscellaneous packaging materials, insurance premiums. We will continue filling up the screen with category, manufacturer, model, UPC code, country of origin, supplier. If we'd like to keep some units in stock, let us specify a reorder at point, fill to quantity, and the lead time in days. The lead time means how many days it takes from a supplier to deliver ordered units. You have probably noticed by now that the inventory items screen consists of a few subscreens marked with tabs. Let us go to the detailed description tab and input items web page and the detailed product description. By now we've inputted all necessary information, therefore it would be a good time to save our record. We click the Save button that is located on the top right part of the screen. As you probably know by now, an underlined field label designates a link. We can double click a field with underlined label to go to a detail behind the value. The item web page label is a link. Let us double click it to see the specified web page. Most fields in the software can be changed without any restrictions. However, some field values require protection. Item ID contains such values. To change item ID, double-click the list and type in a new value. We've just added suffix dash B to the item ACAB102. Let us remove it now. Double-click, wipe out dash B, Press the Enter key. To delete an item ID, let us click the Trash Can button. The Make a Choice screen pops up. Here we can choose to discontinue a selected item or delete it for good. Let us discontinue the item. The discontinued records are still shown, but with the red colored item ID and description. Clicking the Trash Can button on the discontinued records gives us an ability to restore or delete them permanently. Also, we can undo the discontinue by ticking off the discontinue switch. The inventory items screen supports on-the-fly filtering. To find a phrase, smartphone, in item ID or description, start typing the words in the filter. In this demo, we are using copy and paste. To remove the filter, click the remove filter button to the left, or wipe out a value from the field manually. From the Inventory Items screen, we can also access the Quick Browse screen by clicking the Binoculars button. To filter the Browse screen, right-click on a, any value and select Filter by Selection from the pop-up menu. To remove the filter, click the Filter button at the screen bottom.
we can also search the screen. Right click the column to search and select find from the pop-up menu. Enter a value that we need to find. Select any part of the field in the match field and click the find next button. When item is found, double click the item ID cell to quickly move to the record detail. The inventory items screen is very similar to the company screen where database of customers and suppliers is maintained. If you know how to navigate one, you will navigate another with ease.